is what I'm doing now something that I can add to my portfolio? Is what I am doing now something that is going to be able to pay me for the rest of my working life? Because if it's not, if it's not that sort of investment, then it is not something that is going to help you survive in the music industry or indeed any industry. Hello again. Today I'm going to talk briefly about my thoughts on the music industry in 2022. A few years ago, I did a video on turning pro in the music industry, and a year or two after that, I did a video on how to be a session musician in the music industry. Since then, a lot has changed, including my own approach and my own line of work. So I thought I would talk a little bit about the music industry as it exists today in my experience, how my own work has changed and how this might help you if you are trying to find a career for yourself. Since COVID, since the global shutdown, the music industry has changed, as many industries have, and the rug was pulled out from most of us in terms of our means of income. Prior to COVID, for probably 12 years prior to COVID, I had been working essentially as a freelance mercenary player. I would go out and play shows and gigs for anybody that needed a drummer, and I would teach and I would produce a bit of music on the side. And I had just got into authoring. I had written my first book, uh, Linear Freedom, in 2017. And I'd started to explore, you know, the educator aspect. I was still doing a YouTube channel. I've been sort of doing a YouTube channel in some form since 2012. But the main source of my income, which was private student tuition and live playing, completely stopped. And it gave me a chance to really consider the sustainability of my career path. Now, by sustainability, I mean something that can not only help me survive, but prosper financially for the rest of my working life. I've got a three-year-old daughter at the time of writing this. I need to see her to at least the age of 18. I need to see myself to at least the age, age of 68 or something and hope I have something resembling a pension at the end of it. Now, in the remaining years of my working life, which is about 30 odd years, I don't want to be lugging my drum kit around on a Friday and a Saturday night halfway across the country for somewhere between 50 and 100 pounds. That's not sustainable. That's not something I want to do. And it's not why I do what I do. Prior to COVID, that was what I was doing. I would, I, from the Midlands in Nottingham, I would take my kit across to the East Coast, play in Norwich for 100 quid and come back on the same night, which was about three hours each way, because that's where the work was. That's where the money was. And that's all well and good when you're in your 20s. You, you don't want to do that when you're 35 and have a three-year-old child at home. At least I don't. What has become clear following the global pandemic, following uh, a change in my mindset and a change in my attitudes and following, I think, changes in the industry at large, is the importance of sustainability for independent musicians. Long-term stability, which is very, very hard to come by in this industry. So how can we achieve this? How can we attain that? Well, first of all, we need to discuss or we need to introduce the concept of what's sometimes called a portfolio career. A portfolio career, as the name suggests, is where we do a lot of different pieces of work, all of which come together to form one coherent source of income. So my portfolio career has maybe half a dozen sources of income. I teach privately. I write and publish educational material. I write and sell compositional material. I occasionally perform live, although since COVID, not very much. And I do educational content and YouTube content like this. And there are a few other things I do. I do a bit of text editing and, and copying um, musical transcription. Uh, engraving that's what I'm trying to say and and EQing and mixing and recording but but that's all that's all much much smaller so the, the main thing is teaching writing composing uh, gigging live very occasionally and educational media YouTube things like that and individually none of these things pay me enough to survive but all together they form a coherent wage that keeps me afloat and crucially gives me the space and the time to build on each of those elements individually. So some of you that know me and know my work and know my channel know that I've, I've written five drumming books. Three of them are method books, two of them are compositions. These, because I own the publishing company that publishes them, will be uh, products for me, assets for me, for the rest of my life. They are not going anywhere. Even if they run out of stock, I just get more printed and replenish the stock. 
they are written, they are finished, they are released, they are published, and I will be able to sell those for the rest of my life. Teaching, obviously, there is a turnover of students, but having invested in a studio like this, I will always be able to offer teaching services. And because of um, the advent of online technology, I can teach remotely. And I do. I teach people all over the world on, on video lessons. And it's, it's great. It's really successful. And I will always be able to offer that. And I am not dependent on external sources in the same way that I was dependent on other bands and other musicians calling me for work as I was pre-COVID. Now, of course, there are always going to be factors beyond our control. There are always kind of scenarios we can imagine, but that's the same in any job. Any company can go under, any government body can be closed, right? What we're aiming for is to give ourselves the best spread of sustainable portfolio items that we can keep drawing income from on a regular basis. You, as the listener, if you're, if you're interested in doing this for yourself, you can start to develop a portfolio for yourself. Well, I play the guitar. I can sing. I can write. I can record. I can teach. I'm good with um, software like video editing. Um, I, I've probably got a book in me because I've developed this own teaching method. There is a lot you can do to create work for yourself that in time will become an income stream for you. So let's say you write an album's worth of music. You're really pleased with them and you've got them on Spotify or you've got them on SoundCloud or something like that. And probably like most independent musicians, you earn pennies every month because it's so difficult to make your music heard amongst all of the other music out there. Now you can start to think, well, what else can I do with this material? Perhaps if you wrote it in a certain way on the guitar, for example, you might like to turn your uh, pieces into a scorebook that other people might like to learn. Maybe you might like to do a series of educational videos where you discuss the process or you discuss the playing. Or maybe one particular song on your album is doing something really interesting compositionally, something really interesting harmonically, so you can talk about it. Maybe you use this educational content you've just developed as part of your teaching. So you develop your teaching practice off the back of the song that you have written or the album you have written. And perhaps in the next album, you hire some other musicians to play on that album. Rather than using Funky Drummer or something like that, you hire a real drummer and you go and you have a day in the studio. And then you have the bright idea I'm going to film the day in the studio. I'm going to do a behind the scenes as we're setting up. I'm going to do a professional video of the performance that can then go online, that can go on your website. Both of those become draws to your channel because people really enjoy seeing behind the scenes of studio sessions. People really enjoy seeing professional footage of a band performing their material. These become promotional tools for you. They become promotional tools for the music. They become a springboard for doing it again. And this is essentially what I did. I wrote Linear Freedom in 2017. I had written and released my first album in 2013. And since 2013, I think I've written and released six studio albums. What they have all enabled me to do is produce further work. They've given me a reputation as somebody that produces work in a certain way. They've given me a reputation as somebody that will hire session musicians and sign contracts and hire uh, videographers and sound engineers and culminate it all together into a project that gets commercially released. And they are all things that add to my teaching repertoire. They are all things that add to my content on YouTube or my website. They are all things from which I am able to teach. So you can start to see, I hope, how this multifaceted approach builds a portfolio for you where every element is interlinked and every element itself can earn you money. So let's let's trace a typical journey for one of my customers. And I, and I, I'm, I apologize to use the word, but let's call it what it is. Let's say somebody in... I don't know, one of the counties in, in Ireland is frustrated with their own drumming and they type how to play jazz drumming on YouTube. They encounter, by the, by the power of the YouTube algorithm, they encounter one of my videos on jazz drumming. And they watch my video 
they like the playing and they think my way of explaining a concept is really good, really clear, and they really take to my style of tu uh, tuition. So they watch that video a few times and they, they go away and they play it on the kit and they try and apply some of the things I talked about in that video. Then let's say one day they wanted to check one of the things I say in the video and they notice for the first time that in the description of the video there is a website. So they follow the link to the website and they find me and they find that I've got a book on jazz, br jazz drumming and they think, oh great, that's fantastic, it's based on the material from the video, so I'm going to buy the book. And then after spending a month with the book, they don't understand something and they remember from my website that I offer tuition and I offer video tuition so they book a lesson with me and having booked a lesson with me they find that they really enjoy my teaching style and the content so they book a lesson with me every month and then they find on my website that over the past few years I've released three or four jazz albums so they can go and listen to those albums on Spotify and hear me playing the material that they are now learning so from one student, from one customer, I've received um, ad revenue from YouTube. I know it's small, but ad, re ad revenue from YouTube on the video they watched. I've received a book sale. I've received a monthly lesson fee from their lessons. And I've received um, royalties from them listening to my music. You have a steady stream of income coming from numerous sources where every product and source that you sell links to the other and links back to you because there are some people that are interested solely in the music I play and they couldn't care less about the drumming. There are some people that care only about my snare drumming and they don't care about my jazz books. There are some people that come to me for tuition in the studio and they don't care about any of it other than how I'm able to teach them drums. There are some people that don't care about the drumming at all and they want the compositions. There are numerous demographics of which I have, for which, to which I have something to offer. I can offer something to the music crowd the educational crowd, the snare drumming crowd, the kit crowd, the YouTube crowd, all of these different facets of my portfolio allow me to make a sale where otherwise I may not have been able to had I not developed all of these assets in a portfolio sense. For each individual musician, you have to find your own portfolio. You might not do the books very well, but you might be brilliant at doing um, flamenco guitar and you have a real s sort of panache for flamenco guitar so you can turn that into something of a specialism for yourself and off the back of that you can teach it you can offer it as an educational resource you can offer it as your own uh, niche in the teaching market so if you start building on your initial product and see how you can spread it out into an array of services that you are able to offer to different demographics that really is the key to surviving in the music industry for any long period of time. How can I produce numerous products as a varied and multifaceted portfolio that will allow me to draw income from them for the rest of my working life and provide me with a pension when I'm old and knackered? So I hope this has given you something to think about. As I said, or, or perhaps as I should say, there is no magic bullet. There is no single thing that I can sit here and tell you that will magically make you successful. Perhaps the most important thing is to reevaluate what that success looks like. The rock and roll era, for all intents and purposes, is dead. The studio era, for all intents and purposes, is dead. I can offer professional recording on my drum kit to people anywhere in the world, and the recordings will be as good as most studios in the world. But so can you, and so can a million other drummers, and so can a million other guitarists. It is so difficult to make the old way work for us today. Because for anybody out there that needs drums, the first thing they will do is they will use MIDI drums, or they will use Funky Drummer, or something like that, Apple Drums, or whatever it is. Fruity Loops, Cubase, you can make some really good sounding drum tracks without a drummer for free in your bedroom. So people like me don't get hired half as much as we used to anymore. That old industry does not exist anymore for the vast majority of people. That doesn't mean you shouldn't strive and hope that happens one day. But for the vast majority, and I keep, I keep saying this, so forgive me, but for the vast majority of musicians on the ground, you have to make work for yourself. And you have to make a multifaceted and sustainable portfolio for yourself that can survive 
some of the individual assets being taken away temporarily. So as I say, I hope this has given you a few things to think about. Perhaps the, the closing thought is that it does take time. So there will be a requirement if you are coming to this completely fresh, there will be a requirement for some immediate income to sustain yourself. But while you are doing that, you need to be thinking in terms of the long run. Is what I'm doing now something that I can add to my portfolio? Is what I am doing now something that is going to be able to pay me for the rest of my working life? Because if it's not, if it's not that sort of investment, then it is not something that is going to help you survive in the music industry or indeed any industry. Thank you very much. See you on the next one.